Furious Driving, proud to be supported by Diamond Bright, protecting, cleaning and caring for the Furious fleet and for yours with 10% off using code FD10. Follow the links in the description below. Hello and welcome to a big empty echoey barn. Ooh, spooky. I'm not moving out, although there is some news on that front coming up very soon indeed. But you've not seen this barn this empty for about a year and a half since I moved in. But there is exciting news on two fronts and that's why today in this cold, you can literally see my breath, January day, I'm over in the barn literally emptying the place. Come with me and have a look around. Oh, and if you like videos about cars like these and people working on them and enjoying them and that kind of stuff, then please do consider hitting the subscribe button underneath. Right, so currently the barn is extremely empty because I've just spent the last literally hour and a half shifting three cars, or four cars technically, because normally where I'm standing right now is the entrance hall area. This is the straight in from the main doors, which is just about long enough for the Rover 200, the Alpha 145, or the Freelander, or the Punto. I think at a push, even the Rover 400 Estate can just about squeeze into this little spot here. Currently, the 200 VI has been inhabiting that because that was when the one I've been using most, up until the NEC, when obviously we discovered A, a bit of rust in the sill, which I need to take care of before it drives in the salt anymore, and B, there was that coolant thing, which does appear to be fixed now. Phew, thank goodness. Now, secondly, where the Mini is currently residing has been the Punto, which astonishes does actually slot into that tiny weeny gap just there which is a masterpiece of both parking and shoving on wheel dollies which are currently just there. Uh, the Mini has been residing just here under the Italian flag and the Alpha 145 has been residing here under the sign. I've actually got an opportunity today to actually put a few more of the, um, the number plates up because I'm here uh, with the barn basically pretty much empty. Uh, the Volvo hasn't moved yet, but because that has been trapped for months by dead alpha, I'm gonna drive that around the farm in a minute just to put some motion into the thing. I do start it occasionally, but it's not been driven anywhere for ages. And poor old Rover Tomcat still needs its head gasket. It's not that expensive. I just, every, there's so much pressure for time and money and things that are on the road need to be kept on the road. When it kind of falls to the back of the queue, it very much does fall hard to the back of the queue. I've been looking on DG IMRS discount MG Rover Supplies, T Series Super Duper Head Gasket, which apparently cures the block leaking, which is the problem that car's got. It doesn't leak into the cylinders, it runs perfectly, but it just gushes oil down the front to the point that the car isn't drivable. Um, that and a timing belt, because no point in doing that, not doing a timing belt, is about 150, 200 pounds. So it's not the end of the world, but. Other big news is going to suck up a lot of cash in a minute, so I'll tell you about that in a second. Uh, right, so that has taken a fair amount of sliding and shoving and pushing, which I can show you B-roll of while we're talking. Uh, I didn't bother filming the Punto, which I should have done really, because that was an adventure in itself, pulling it sideways. Um, and then getting the Alpha out was another wee adventure, because the turning circle on that car, the lock on it is just hopeless. Here's a bit of that. Right, now this car, has not moved since it got parked here after my trip down to Bewley back at the end of the summertime when the clutch just failed completely. Um, so this has been abandoned here, which also means that the Volvo has been abandoned here because the Volvo couldn't get out and its MOT expired several months ago. And it only occurred to me a day or so ago, I've been paying tax on that blooming thing um, all through the summertime. Okay, I was about to be really proud and say I left these things on trickle chargers so they always start really easily. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, maybe it's just like first night nerves. That's better. Oh, I love the sound of this car. This does have though famously appalling turning circle. So getting this thing out past the Mini, which is now over there, is gonna require uh, dollies. Oh, this is so tight getting this car out. It's a Ridiculous. I need about three people spotting for me because the overhangs are crazy and the mirrors are useless. Fortunately, the clutch works when it's cold. It's only once it gets a little bit warm, it just completely goes and you've got nothing. It'll be interesting to see what it looks like when it comes out of the car. Oh my goodness, I'm nearly out. This is probably the best I've ever done this. I did clip the mirror though. Maybe that's the price I have to pay. So one of the reasons the cars have all got to be 
out of here is because the Alpha, which was stuck here and very much trapped, is finally getting its new clutch. That's gonna happen in a couple of days time. I need it to be in the position where it can be the driving out car from here because that can drive a short distance, but as soon as the, the engine and the clutch get warm, it starts slipping worse and worse and worse to the point at which you can't drive it. Um, so we're gonna do it before Christmas time, gonna get it shipped over to Go Italia where they can, uh, well, we will, I'll do it with him just so I can see how it's done, but it's basically quite a complex involved job that requires a four post lift and someone who's done it before. He is a Alfa Romeo dealer trained technician and he apprenticed on cars of that era, so he knows them inside and out. He's, he's generally very honest about what is doable and not doable by a DIY hack mechanic like me. And if he says, don't even think about it. I will listen to his advice and, and run it around there and we'll do it in his workshop with well, basically him doing it and me drinking tea. And the second reason for doing all of this is it's because I'm gonna have to move this little flag out of the way. This incidentally, if you missed the episode when I put this flag up, I picked up this quite old uh, British uh, Union Jack flag at an, a show a while ago and I thought because I've got so many British cars it'd be quite cool to have it in here and then go and get a flag for every nation of all the cars I've got. So Swedish, Italian, um, that's basically it actually, isn't it? Swedish, Italian, Swedish, Italian, British. Um, I'll have a quick think. Yeah, Rovers, Alphas, Fiats. Oh, Japanese, I've got a Japanese car now. Huh. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not really good at Imperial. That was listed in feet and inches, not meters. And yeah, I got a little bit confused. <laughs> turned up, like, wow, oh, am I living underneath this thing? So yeah, this needs to move out of the way for the time being. But it is quite handy being such a big bit of cloth for sound deadening because it, it stops the echoes around the room. I need to clear the space under here because any moment now, a lorry is gonna arrive from Machine Mart, I hope that's the wind, um, which contains an air compressor. I did tell my Patreons and channel members about this last week. The plan for the Mini has finally evolved. Now we've been debating for a long time on the channel about how we're gonna take care of the next stage of the Mini uh, strip down. And this has actually been procrastinated upon slightly on the channel. And I've kind of been procrastinating a bit because of the expense of this next stage. And uh, yeah, it's a big decision not to be taken lightly. The choices really have been, Acid dip, which is definitely expensive, can leave acid in channels and things which will come out and spoil the paint in the future. Um, blast it, as in media blast it, which is a good solution, but again, quite expensive. Or C, go DIY, which means getting those little kind of waffly wafer lava things and a drill and just spending many hundreds of hours just grinding the thing back for hours and hours. Great for expense, bad for time, a bit tricky getting into all the corners. What if there was option D, which is a DIY and a professional level thing? And that's what I'm going for. I'm gonna really mess up something badly here in the barn. What I've got coming is a big air compressor, as I just said, and also, all right, let's nip upstairs to where the kettle is on and we can make another cup of tea. Here we go with the nice furious driving Volvo mug, which is quite appropriate. It's actually gonna turn the engine on that car today. Here, this is the exciting thing, which is gonna be a big, big development. This is a clock pressurized sand blaster, 32 liter tank. So it is a big, big beast, which means that we can actually power off all that dirt, all that rust, all the old paint, blizzard it off, which means we can get the car down to the bare metal with minimum damage, minimum fuss, maximum speed, which is all fantastic. But because this is such a big beefy thing, the reason we've had to sort of delay on it is it needs a big compressor to make the thing work, as in a, a proper monster of a compressor. There is just no way the little kind of 50 litre weedy thing I've got at home has got a hope in hell of running this. So that's why we've had to be kind of just hanging on and sort of getting things sorted out. I kind of realized a while ago I wanted to do this, but getting such an expensive bit of equipment here in the barn, yeah, it's taken a little while to get things sorted out um, because yeah, lots of money. Incidentally, up here in the top of the barn, we have got much of the rest of the classic Mini. We've also got almost a full interior in red for an R50 Mini. So if someone does actually want a red R50 Mini interior, do get in touch because I would quite like to get it gone. If no one takes it in the next couple of months, then I will like, convert it into like office chairs for up here. Also, isn't heat supposed to rise? It's actually colder up here than it is downstairs. Of course, this does mean that I've now got to rehome everything that's living under the stairs before the compressor moves in here. Oh man. So this is the problem. When you take a car to pieces, it takes up far more space in component form than it ever did as a single car. I've been looking for these boots. Ha! Ah, 
Distributed cap for the Mini. I knew, well, I didn't know I'd seen one, but I knew I needed one, so maybe we can test fire it at some point with that. God, that's an old school type, isn't it? Look, screw-in type cables. Now, last time we started the Volvo in this position, um, it was a day or so before we went to Sweden, in it? And the clutch failed. So let's see if we have more luck today. It has been on trickle charge and it has still got an original Volvo battery in it. Clutch still feels good, which is good. I love the glow of that old radio. Thanks to uh, VHS Chloe for sending that one out. Magic. I love an old red block Volvo. It got any fuel in it? Yeah, it's got half a tank. It's been a while though. The thing about being on a farm is I can drive a couple of laps of the farmyard. There's quite a lot of land around here, tracks and things, where I can rummage around, roll around, I should say, not rummage around, and um, yeah, give the cars a little bit of exercise without them having to be MOT'd and taxed and stuff, which is quite handy. Give them a chance to roll the tyres and stretch their legs. I will be honest. It's a little bit bigger than I was expecting. Also turns out it weighs 172 kilograms. So enormous thank you to the farm manager um, who happened to be around with the big forklift truck because the fork truck and the tail lift on the lorry that was delivering it was broken and we'd have had a bit of difficulty getting this thing down without that help. So thank you. Right, so let's have a look underneath here. This is basically air compressor unboxing. It's not something you see very often. That's a pretty hefty power lead. That's going to need a fair bit of juice to run it, isn't it? Now, whenever I throw away an appliance, I always keep the plug. My wife was always like, why are you keeping that rubbish? It's more junk we don't need. This is why I keep the plugs. I would fire it up right now, but obviously that's not going to happen. This thing is a beast. Yeah, I had been thinking about getting some kind of uh, rolling toolbox to slot under here, but I'm kind of glad I didn't because there's literally nowhere else in this barn that this could have lived and left room for a car because this is almost as big as the Mini. It is monstrous, but very cool. Right, and there's one more thing before we put everything back away again. Now this has been put in, hidden underneath everything. I haven't started the Blue Rover, the Tomcat, in absolutely ages because it dribbles oil everywhere, but because I just want to run it up for the first time in a long time. Let's quickly do that, just because it sounds good. Right, I've reconnected the battery. I did think the horn was going to go off, but it didn't. The interior on this car... Oh, it does go off. This will be fun. You have to lock and unlock it on the driver's door. There we go. Phew. What a lovely interior this car has got. The half leather silver stone fabric. That leather steering wheel I've added to it off a GTI. We even have, <laughs> very appropriately, not applied to the car yet, the young retro motor club bloody leaking, which this car often is. Let's see if it'll start up. I hope it will do. It shouldn't, shouldn't not start. Fuel pump primed. You've been on charge. No, the battery. Oh, for crying out loud. Let's try that again. I don't know if the battery has still managed to die despite being on a maintenance charger. Stupid thing here. In neutral, fuel pump primed. You've got a blooming jump back on you. Why are you still not starting? It's the earth. The problem is this thing. These security anti-drain disconnect things, I've always had problems with them. They never give a good earth. And so you wiggle it and the whole car just dies. One last try, I'm using the NOCO today because I lent my top down to my neighbour last night and he's not uh, finished with it just yet. Oh, not again. No, fine, whatever. Ow, I don't want to drive it anyway. Stupid car. Okay, now the fun begins of putting everything back into the barn. I'm going to put this one in backwards this time because 
Well, we're having a bit of a think, haven't we, about what to do with this car. Oh yeah, I forgot the electric mirrors don't work. I haven't used it in months, and I've, yes, I have missed it a bit, but it's not been the end of the world not having it, because, well, I've got other big saloons and we've got other, other stuff. The question is, do we hang on to this car longer, or do we, uh, do we let it go now? We've got the prospect of maybe turbocharging it, but I don't know if that's going to devalue it massively. This, this car is great fun. You know, if you look back to the Volvo to, to Gothenburg video we did last year now, gosh, last April, um, me and Barry had a great time cruising through the Europe in this car, but it is really, really thirsty. I mean, like, painfully thirsty, and it's quite slow, but it is incredibly comfortable. I do need to fit, fix both of the front heated seats. Maybe that's the job we can do in the next couple of weeks uh, inside the barn, nice and dry. Um, but yeah, do I flog it as it is, fit the turbo to it? Is that going to be a, a project that, that kills the car? I don't know. Now, people always say in the videos, why don't I reverse this car in? And the fact is, it's significantly harder to do that. And I might actually come a cropper trying to do it today. We'll find out. It's this 90 degree corner as we go in. This is the problem. Oh, it's not going to do it. It is not going to do it. I'm going to have to go in forwards. Oh, that's tight. Thank goodness for the insanely light power steering on this car. And the still functioning clutch. Having a unit that I could drive these bigger cars straight into would be so much better. Right, next up, the 200 VI. At least we've got a decent turning circle on this car. That's tight, too tight, in fact. We need to do the power steering fluid on it, add that to my list of jobs. The Mini needs to go back over there. That's gonna be the tricky one. And also, I've not got a home for the uh, Sinclair C5 anymore because it was where the air compressor is now. Could be awkward. Now one thing I know I haven't got and I really should have for this car is a rotisserie. I've been looking online, they're available. They're not too much money, they're a few hundred quid. It's yet more expensive. If someone has a rotisserie, which they're between projects with for the next couple of months and they wouldn't mind lending it to me, then just get in touch because I could really use one at the moment. And it's a thing that you use once and then it's like an engine lift. You need it when you need it, but the rest of the time it's just a big thing that's in the way. So I don't really want to be buying one and then having it sitting here forever. If you have a rotisserie and it's available and spare, give me a shout. Thank you. Do you know what? It turns out, you know, it turns out cars are heavy. I'm thinking it might have been easier to drive it in forwards and then push the, the rear of the car in. Why did I not think of that before? Uh, back of the car is much lighter than the front. No engine in it. And amazingly, the headlights seem to be working, which is our first. Our question is, is there room to squeeze the Sinclair C5 in this gap here in the front and still shut the doors? Oh, it just touches the bolt, but it does, it does go down. We're in. Well, that was a success. Now we've got literally everything crammed back inside again. And the Sinclair is actually slightly easier to manhandle than the A-Series on a small wooden dolly. So when I do need to move, open the door and move a car, it's actually a little bit easier. So today has been a success. We have now installed a massive air compressor in here. So we can now, in the coming days slash weeks, or very soon indeed, get to work making it be a bare metal shell. Hopefully lots of shiny metal, hopefully not lots of crusty metal. I know there is going to be some obviously because yeah it's it's a 50 something year old car in the meantime i have been cleaning and degreasing the mini engine ready to put back together it's like an entire morning of work of just degreasing that it doesn't look any different at all but trust me the goo that came off it it is significantly cleaner and this is something i did quickly just want to say uh, because some people get really quite grumpy if i put a video out and it's just a um a blog type video a bit like this and i'm sort of muddling through the background stuff. Um, there's a number of reasons why we do this on YouTube. Sometimes it's just to kind of stay connected. If you have nothing else to say in a video for a little while, nothing actually achieved, you kind of need to keep on connecting with your audience and saying, hi, I'm still here. Um, partly so your audience remember you and partly so that the algorithm remembers you. You don't kind of get, get drop off. So you're kind of forced into doing this even if there's nothing big to say. 
it's taken half a day to get the cars in and out and just install it. So, and of course the other thing is, and this is going behind, breaking the fourth wall, going behind the scenes of YouTube. In January, the ad revenue rate is horrifically low compared to the rest of the year. So you do have to put out videos possibly more than the rest of the year in order to keep the, uh, the money coming in to sort of keep this stuff going along. So sometimes you have to put a blog type video out, which I know some people get really, really cross about it, but this is the way YouTube works. YouTube is a conversation. So sometimes stuff is going on. It's not a major progress with a particular project, but it is a big development here. Uh, this is the biggest investment in this channel's infrastructure in a really long time. Sorry, since the barn itself, I would say. So yeah, that's a, a big thing to shout about. I'm really very excited indeed to have this equipment here so we can crack on. We can do sandblasting, we do painting, pump tires up, I suppose, as well, if you really want to. <laughs> Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you're as excited as I am about this major development in what is going to be the progress on the Mini because that does mean big progress can happen. That's why I'm kind of installing on this and letting things drag on a little bit because, yeah, we needed to get that thing over here to, to get onto that. I need to build like a frame or something up here off that so we can keep the dust separated from the rest of the room. I'm excited. Can you tell I'm excited? Because I'm very excited. Anyway, right, I'm going to go and do other stuff now. I'll see you again very soon, doing some other stuff with some other cars. Goodbye, everybody. Like, subscribe, you know the drill.